What's going on, my people? Welcome back to another episode of Cashflow Combos. Today we're here with Mr. Starboy himself, Freddie Classics. Come on. <laughs> What's going on, my brother? Bro, yeah. same old, same old. What's good, man? What's yeah, going yeah, on? Yeah, yeah. How you been? How you been? <laughs> oh, good. Oh, good. Can't complain. Yeah. Can't What's complain. Dubai saying, man? I mean, yeah, Dubai, you know Dubai already. Yeah, <laughs> Dubai yeah. is known for goodness. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah. Like, um, everyone that knows Dubai knows Dubai for the luxury lifestyle, yeah, yeah, yeah. the quality of life. You know what I'm saying? If yeah. I can mention the list and it will go on and on and on why people like Dubai. Yeah, 100%. Man. I've seen like a lot of celebrity clientele on your page, man. Like, like Sir Patrice Evra, Fat Joe. How did you meet these kind of people? A good service actually speaks for itself, you know. Hmm. And also, um, I've always said to myself and I've always said to my clients that a good haircut sells more than any advert that you can ever do. Hmm. Because, for instance, if I place an advert here, it's only in one position, right? If someone mm. don't pass by, they don't see it. Do you get it? Yeah. But then if I give you a good trim, oh, you you walk around. I don't even if you wake up the whole day and you say I'm not gonna go anywhere, yeah. people around you will still <laughs> see you. Yeah. Yeah. See yeah, yeah. you know what I'm saying? So that's why I don't I don't play with my trims. I make sure that anyone that sits on my chair goes like leaves my seat happy. Mm. You understand? So by so doing, that's how it brings other people as well. So I would say it's because of quality to me and from the feedback that I get from my clients as well, I would say it's because of quality. Because for instance, if I see you, say for instance, I'm in need of, I'm in Dubai, I'm in need of a trim, yeah? Yeah. I walk around the mall and I see you, uh, oh yeah, bro, who, where did you get your trim from? Definitely. Yeah, yeah. If you were happy with a barber, you're going to refer me to the same person. So it goes... I would say from one good client, if you do, if you do a good trim, you can get maybe twenty different clients from one person. Yeah. So you say the product would market itself. Exactly. Mm. I remember one time um, I done a trim for one of my clients, bro. He was working in Dubai more. Mm. He got someone asking, ah, who done your trim? Well, I was just there. One top guy phoned me. Yeah. How long ago was that then? Um, that's like two, three years ago. Two three years ago. But phoned me like, yo. But I saw your trim in the mall and I, bro, I want the same trim. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so like, people, so some people don't even care how their hair looks or whatever. Mm. Once they've seen that you've done it for someone, yeah, yeah, they yeah. want the same thing. They want so, Freddie as well, man. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's good, man. That's good. You know, so, so. Yeah, so tell us a bit about your background. Where are you from? How did you come to Dubai? Yeah. Tell, us your, tell us your journey. Obviously, bro, it's been a long journey. I would say I've been in this trimming business for like, um, if I'm not mistaken, for like 16 years. 16 oh. years. Oh, wait. Yeah. How old were you when you started? But I was really, I was, I was in high school. I started, obviously when I finished junior high school, I used to, by the way, I grew up in Ghana, I'm a Ghanaian, born mm. and raised. And um, when, I, when I finished high, uh, junior big high school. Big up Ghana. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, big up Ghana, he said, you know. Um, when I finished junior high school, in Ghana, when you finish junior high school, you stay home for like, I think six months or mm. three months, if I'm not mistaken, bro, it's been long. Yeah, I'm not yeah. even accurate. But then um, you wait for your results to come. So whilst I was waiting, bro, sometimes I'll be home, I'll take the razor blade, I'll shape up my yeah. hair myself, you know. Sometimes I'll put a blade on the comb. Yeah. Those days, bro, I'm talking about somewhere 2006, 2007, you know what I'm saying? Mm. That's been long. Then um, little by little, I develop an interest for it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Growing up, I had multiple talents, but even barbering wasn't one. I, I, I'm the type that if I see, like, say, this mic there, bro, I want to open it and see what's inside. Yeah. So I studied electrical engineering when I went to, uh, when I went to high school. Um, I did applied electricity. Yeah. So I was more of electronics person, you know. But then when I went to high school, um, I, was in, I, I was in a boarding house. So you live in the school. Okay. So my, my, my city where I grew up was like 30 minutes away from where my school was. So I, I live in the school with, in a boys dormitory. Hmm. So I remember going to school, I had one clipper by then from Mosa, a brand called Mosa with a cable. Those days I took it to school. So every weekend, Bro, you know, high school, you're trying to save money and all that. <laughs> I want to go to the barbers, bro. I will fade myself. Like, I've been doing this taper that I have, this style that I've been yeah. doing it for time. Hmm. I would just touch up my own side and do a shape up. So I was doing it my first year in high school. And then I had some friends. They were twins. 
And um, they see me do it all the time. Then they pull up on me like, yo, bro, we see you cut yourself all the time. What Can you do the same for us? And that was how I done it for the next month. You understand? I, was, I always do it for myself, yeah. but that was how, how I started doing it for the next person. Bro, I did it for them and it came out nicely. Like they were happy with it. Bro, I'm not even lying. It got to a point. During weekends, I don't even go for dining. I don't go for entertainment. It's all trims. Before I finished high school, I mm. trimmed uh, most of the people, including the headmaster as well. <laughs> <laughs> no way. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Including the headmaster, you know. So I developed the interest right from high school. And even before I completed, I had one friend that we had to set up a small corner barbershop. Mm. Imagine I was in a boarding house, but I would run away from the boarding house on weekends to go do trims. Mm. So you had a little side hustle on the side so, as well. Exactly. Yeah. It was not mainly for the money that time, you know. I just, I just loved it. You, you know what I'm like saying? A passion, passion. I, was, I had passion for it. Mm. So I, I was, I was still schooling. Like some, uh, the days that I don't have class, I'll go to the barbershop. Mm. It, it's one of my friends. He's still in Dubai as well, and yeah. and uh, and then we had the shop and. When I finished high school, um, I went to uni. Still on, still studying my uh, electrical engineering. Hmm. I went to um, it's one uni in, Kuma, in Ghana called uh, Kumasi Polytechnic. That's where I went, and I was doing um, electrical engineering. Bro, first year. You know when you go to a new environment, you try to study and see how it goes yeah. and everything. First year it was calm. I was not still in hostel, you know. Yeah. This is, you know, one thing I realized: anywhere I do it, people appreciate it. So it gives me the willpower to do more. Hmm. I feel like with barbering, you can be remote. You could do it anywhere like, as long as you got your clippers and your kit. Exactly. So, so even in uni, that's how it started. Still, I was in a hostel, still training myself, and then my boys. Hmm. We were all doing the same course. But then, by then, I had the experience. I was doing proper trims. Yeah. Hmm. So then I trimmed myself, I trimmed them. Then before I finished, before I completed, I had to get, there's one, there was one printing press. I had to take a part of it to still do a corner barbershop there, you know? Yeah, yeah. So it's like, it follows me everywhere I go. Yeah. I'm not even going to lie. Coming to Dubai back in 2015, yeah. I never thought of doing barbering here, even though I had the skill. Hmm. I came with the engineering that I schooled for. Yeah. Well, I have a higher national diploma in um, electrical engineering technician. And I still got the IQ, you know. Yeah, I can yeah. fix things up. No, decent, but man. ever since I got hold of the clippers, yeah. I'm timeless. I don't, I don't have time. I like, I hardly get time for even myself. Talk less of getting time to think of doing something else, you mm -hmm. know. Um, when I came to Dubai back in 2015, um, I was living with some Ghanaians that, I mean... I, they were the people I knew when I came, so I had to, I didn't know anyone here. Mm. And then it was only one of my, my friend that I told you that we opened the barbershop back in high school. He was here before I came. And then um, the people I came to meet. So I was, I was staying somewhere in Abu Hill. I don't know if you've ever heard of it. I've heard of it, yeah. Yeah, so. So you, when you came here, you weren't thinking of opening a barbershop at all? Nah, bro. So what, what, if, made, what made you like think like? You know, initially, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. I, I studied electrical engineering, so I, in my mind, I'm looking something relating to related to what I studied in school. Yeah. Yeah. Do you want to know what's mad? <laughs> <laughs> when I came, same story, hmm. where I was staying, I still came with my same clippers, bro. Yeah. And then I had, but then I had more clippers, not even not only <laughs> one. Yeah. <laughs> not like when I went to high school, I had yeah. more. So um, the place where I was staying in Abu Hill. They were Ghanaians there, obviously. Mm. And me, you know me, every three days I'll touch up myself, I'll do something for my own hair. And same thing, they go like, bro, oh, can you trim us? You know what I'm saying? I think people like it when they see like there is a barber among them, they can get it for free, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> well, some, I don't know if it's because of that, but or maybe mm. it's because of how good I used to trim myself or something, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. But then um, they're like, oh, can you trim us? And I done it. So one of them told me, Oh, bro, you just came to Dubai. Maybe you might as well find a job then. I know one of my friends that owns a barbershop in Dera. 
I was like, okay, yeah, cool. Um, then he was like, okay, I'll take you there. So we went there, and the guy was like, the owner of the barbershop, he was like, I'm going to try you for three days. If you're good, I will employ you. Yeah. I, work, I work one day, he said, give me your passport. Hmm. But then, when I, was, I was, when I first came, I was also applying for jobs. I sent some CVs to companies relating to the engineering thing that I studied, yeah? Mm. I sent one to uh, Palazzo Versace to be like a technician. Versace? Hotel, yeah, the hotel. That's crazy. So guess what? When this guy took my passport to do my residence, mm. I got an email from Palazzo Versace as well to come for interview. Oh. Mm. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. So this is, how, this, is, um, this is how I became a barber in Dubai. When... This one said, I've already started. No, when he took my passport, hmm. a week after, then I got an email from Versace saying, uh, come for an interview. Guess what? I had, to, I had to tell them that I don't have my passport, so I cannot. Initially, I didn't tell them I don't have my passport. I told them, I'm busy this hmm. week. Can we reschedule it? And they were like, cool. You know? So I was trying to convince the owner of the barbershop that, oh, uh, can I get my passport? I want to go see someone. Mm -hmm. But then he told me, like, yo, Freddie, listen, I've been here for time. If you know you don't want to work, just tell me, and then I'll know what to do. Or because I've already started your residence, if your name appears twice in the system. That time I didn't know much about how yeah. the rules in Dubai works and everything. So I was like, okay. Still... I went for that interview without my passport. And they were like, okay, yeah, we can employ you, but now we need your passport so you can sign an offer letter. Oh. Passport is already gone. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> so that's just how I became a barber. And to be fair, like, no single regret, you know, because um, I'm happy that I stuck, like, I got stuck with my passion. Something, I'm doing something that I have passion for. Hmm. You understand? It's not like, I was, I was, I'm a good engineer, but, but what I'm doing, I also got passion for it. Yeah. yeah. So no regrets at all. Yeah, now you can see that, man. Like how you said, you started when you were uh, back in boarding school in the hostels. You, you opened a little corner shop on the, on the side. Exactly. So, so what helped you develop that kind of like business mindset at like a young age? Um, again, I think, I guess it was, it was the crowd, depending on the, the way how people were on me. Hmm. Every weekend, like I wanted. So in Ghana, high schools every every uh, from Friday evening to Sunday there will yeah. be entertainment. Like they will invite a rapper, yeah. and then Sunday there is church service. It got to a point I was not doing all that. Only yeah. I was spending all the time on trims. Yeah. Even in high school, would you believe that I was charging people like an amount of like fifty fills, uh, fifty fifty fills, the smaller the coin in the yeah, like fifty fills by then. And people were still paying it. That time, yeah, I would yeah. say it was expensive. You, you know? hustling then as well. Yeah, but people people were still paying it. So I I I just realized the 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 pressure on me, and I monetized it. Mm. So I felt like, okay, um, why don't we make it proper then? If there is a shop, then we can make money out of it mm. rather than just giving out the talent for nothing. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. So that, that's good, man. To see that you. Instead of you know, entertainment, you know, like like playing games stuff like that. Exactly. At a young age, you were on like the business, making the money. So like, it's, it's good to see, man. Yeah, now nah, every I would say every stage of my life in uh, mm. in education, I was known as a barber mm. in the school. <laughs> I'm yeah. not gonna lie. Even till today, I still got my mates that we were all we all went to uni together. Like we were doing, we were staying in the same hostels and doing the same course. Till today, some still message me like. Yo, bro, ever since you left, I've not got trims like how it used to be. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but it's, sometimes it's funny, but at the same time, um, I, I feel like I left a mark. Yeah. In your country, and, yeah? Uh, not in the country, but you know, if, if you've been away for that long, I left, I left Ghana since 2015 and still you have friends that message you like, yo, since you left, we've yeah. never had a trim like yours. So nine years, they remember that. There's For no one me, like really... it makes me happy. Like, okay, I done something that people like. It's unique, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So how how much should you invest in your first kit, your mobile kit? 
How much was that? <laughs> That's another thing. I'm the type, um, to be honest, I like quality. Yeah, yeah. I would choose quality over quantity any day, you know, right from time. Um, so how, what was your first investment for all your kit? Yeah, I'm coming there. When I used to work, <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know, that's the thing. People feel like yeah. uh, barbering tools are like, like maybe $2, $10. Bro, yeah. The barbering industry has now become like, um, you see how iPhone will release a new, so iPhone 12, 13, yeah. 14, 15, and anytime it comes, you have to upgrade. Upgrade, yeah. This is how it has become. Same like us. G-Wagon yeah. will produce 2019 model, 2020 models, model, yeah. 2021. I mean, Mercedes, I mean. Mm. So the same, these clippers that we use, mm. they, there is, it, it's also like that, you understand? Yeah. So if you were using a clipper that was made 2020, it will still function. Yeah. But then now they make it more stylish, more modern, and you don't want to be like an outdated barber, you know. And stay up to date. So as time goes on, you keep on. I just bought clippers a, a week ago, and mm -hmm. I have, I can't even count how many clippers <laughs> I have. But, I, you know, when you have passion for it, when you see, I'm, not only aesthetics only, but if you understand barbering, you can see a clipper and know that, yeah, this is a hitter. I need this in my set. Mm, yeah, definitely, man. You, you, do you know barbers flex? Barbers, <laughs> we flex with our clippers as well. Same way how someone will flex with their watch, flex yeah. with their car. Barbers flex with their clippers, yeah? clippers yeah, yeah. as well. So I will say, um, when I started um, mobile barbering back in 2020, if I'm not mistaken, getting my set up because it was locked down and ordering stuff. I got most of my stuff from the US by then. US. I yeah. had to wait for. I, I had to wait for. Um, the orders to came through yeah, and all yeah. that. It cost me, if I'm not mistaken, the full set of clippers in my set by then would have been like maybe 15,000 15, dirham. Yeah. That was the first one from the bar, yeah? No, 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 no. I'm oh. talking about when I started mobile. Oh, but, okay. But yeah. the first one, obviously, yeah, those ones were like, I can't, I can't really remember how much it costed because... I was working in shops by then. Oh, okay. So it's 15,000 dirhams, yeah. That, for, 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 the, for the mobile kit, when I first started, yeah, I think mm. it cost, it cost uh, may, maybe more or maybe, but around that, that, mm. that amount. But no, no, that's the thing, man. I feel like, you know, if, you, if, you, if you're if you going to have the best clientele, you're going to have the biggest, you're, you're going to have to keep updating, you have to have the best equipment as well, right? Definitely. It could be cheap, but mm. I went for, like I said, went for quality, I yeah. went for quality. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. like, I prefer to buy something that will cost me maybe a thousand dollars, but will stay for years than mm. to buy something that, something for a hundred dollars and then, break. and then uh, one week, one month, you have yeah. to buy another And then it costs you more in the That's long That's why run. they say a stitching time says what? Well, a stitch in time saves nine. Like oh, if, yeah, yeah. if 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 you if you if you solve it early, you don't have to spend more. Mm. You know. Whereas if, if you yeah. If you so if to... you keep on buying cheaper stuffs, it will always cost you more later. Mm. But then if you if you if you go with quality from the start, it it, it takes you a long way. A lot of fun, man. So yeah, tell me. Uh, off camera, we we're talking about. Um, I think you done. You trimmed Chris Brown. Yeah. Uh, you, he, he came for the GQ. GQ? Yeah, I done, I done, I done Chris Brown for for the GQ uh, GQ Middle East. Yeah, tell me how, yeah. how that came about. Obviously, you know, yeah. um, I'll say I didn't have. The, you see, there is a difference when you have when it's a God given talent, mm. and there is a difference when you. There are people who who go to barbering school to learn barbering to be able to become a barber, and there is a difference when. You just you are just gifted with it. You, you understand me? Yeah. Um, it still it came through clients like people that I've done before. Um, big shout out to Starino though. Oh, Starino yeah. is the one that put me on to Chris Brown and many many other people as well. Hmm. Um, so I was there. I found myself in a was he in a group or something? Yes, Starino hit me up like, yo, bro, CB is in town and he need. Um, a quick, a quick trim. He have a shoot, so can you make it on time? Yeah, it's like yeah, bro. Say less, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Yeah. So um, I put up, I put up on uh, CB, 
And bro, proper guy, Chris yeah. Brown, nice, very nice guy. And um, yeah, we done, we done the trim. Nah. He was happy with it. Big shout out to his guy, Booba as well. Booba, yeah. Booba, yeah. Big up Booba. Come on. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, nah. um, yeah, we done Chris Brown and he was happy. Yeah. Unfortunately, it was for um, GQ Middle East, you know, so we couldn't take personal pictures with it. Oh, but you still because, got the magazine picture, is it like his? Yeah, it's yeah. on, it's on, it's on GQ page. Yeah, it's on GQ page. So yeah, but no, you see me. To me, everyone is a celebrity to me, mm. and every trim is 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 as important as doing every celebrity. Do, do you understand? Hundred percent. Yeah. You don't you don't have to be um, a celebrity, a celebrity mm. or something to get quality trim from me. Yeah. I believe anyone that sits on my chair at that moment. He is a celebrity to me. Mm. So you take care of customer service, ten out of ten. Yeah. I'm not, I don't know. <laughs> that's what they say. But if, if you know what I'm saying, um, the feedback from people are always positive, and no one is ten out of ten. But I would say I try my best. You know, yeah. I do what I can, and the people appreciate it. Yeah. So yeah, not only Chris Brown, I've done. I mean, couple, couple big names, mm. but then like I said. Everyone is a celebrity to me on my chair. Yeah. Who would you say is like the first person that you got a phone call from or walk in and thought like, whoa, is this guy like really want to trim for me? You know, funny enough, even back in Ghana, when I was doing those trims, I yeah. still used to do one or two maybe musicians or something. Yeah. You understand? So, oh, so it's always, you always been used to it. I, I, yeah, it's always been around me. Mm. I remember back in uh, 2016 or something, if I'm not, I'm not sure of the date, but I trimmed um, the Ghana football club, the uh, Ghana football team yeah. in Maidan. Oh, Maidan, yeah. Uh, I was still working in uh, Dara by then. Yeah. yeah, in Maidan. So... You were well known in Dubai? Uh, no, no, I, I, I don't know. That time I wasn't the Freddy I am now, but... Okay. but I still had the chance to, to trim hide. footballers. You, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know what I'm saying? The likes of um, um, Mubarak Wakasu. I don't know if you if you know Wakasu. Yeah. Uh, them, uh, the Ayu Jordan Ayu. Jordan Ayu, yeah. Um, I think. Oh, I trim most of the mo most. I trim the most players, of them yeah. in the team. You know, nah, I can. It's it's been long, so I can't really mention all the names. But mm. yeah. So it's been a thing around me right from time, and I thank God for it. We, 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 we keep building on it. You know, yeah, yeah. we keep building on so it. So you, you build a good brand, man. Fre Freddie Classics, you turned it into a brand now. Yeah, yeah, it's, it has to. It has yeah. to. You know, identity is everything to me. That's it. Um, if you wanna stand out, or if you wanna do something different, you have to be you. So, the Freddy is my name, and I worked in one. Mm. I worked in one uh, salon in Ghana before, mm. called uh, Beauty Classics. So, when I left there and I came to you, I was like, okay, maybe I should just add the classics to my name <laughs> and make it Freddy Classics. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, I worked out for the best man. You know, so it's been that, that that's just how it's been so far. I mean, the bar the barbering industry in Dubai is getting bigger and bigger and bigger. I remember those days when um people used to think if you are coming to Dubai, you won't get proper fades, like there are not good barbers yet. I used to hear that a lot. Hmm. Oh bro, I'm glad that I found you. <laughs> Oh, I was wondering, I was so bothered that I'm going to be in Dubai and I'm not going to get trimmed for like a whole two weeks or something because I thought there were no barbers who could do fit. Who tell you? <laughs> who told you, bro? Yo. There's too many barbers, yeah. man. People are killing it these days. Yeah. And I like it. You know why? Because it makes, it keeps you on your toes yeah. that you don't have to sleep. The moment you sleep, someone will take your position quick. Yeah. So then it keeps you grinding and grinding and grinding, which is, which is good. You've got to step up your game as well. You have to step up your game. You have to keep being consistent. Yeah. You know, if a client comes to you today yeah. and 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 uh, he gets a good trim, but tomorrow he comes a messed up trim, the next day he comes a good trim, the next day a messed up trim, but the next day he'll be like, even this guy, I'm not even sure if I'm going to... You are not certified. They don't... Yeah. You know, 
what clients like the most Consi- ca- consistency consistency one yeah. Going to a barber and then you don't a barber that you don't have to keep on explaining yourself Tell over and do over this, and over. do that. Mm. Most of my clients, I have clients that have been trimming for five years, six years, four years, you know. And yo, I respect them the most. You know why? Because they 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 know that when they come, they don't have to say anything. They just come and sit on the chair. <laughs> and sometimes I but one thing with me. Whether I've been trimming you for years or not, each and every single trim that we do, I will still ask you, we're doing the same thing. Because maybe, maybe last week trim you saw something online, you want to change it. Yeah. But some people, some, some barbers don't do that though. Like once they get used to you, they know that, okay, you are on the same trim. But some people might want to. Different style. Yeah, yeah. Maybe they saw something, maybe they want to change style. Maybe change like, their look a little bit. Exactly. Maybe, yeah. oh, they want a beard, take this time, maybe. Yeah. So every single time, even if I've been trimming you for years, I will still be like, yo, bro, should we do the same thing or should we change something? Yeah. They'll be like, okay, go on. Then some, 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 some don't even check their trim. Sometimes I was like, yo, bro, we're <laughs> done checking. It's like, bro, come on, for how many years now? You know, yeah, yeah. they already know. So it's something I really, I really appreciate my clients for for them having that confidence in me. Because to be honest, it's not easy. Men, we can't really do too much. Mm. Men don't do makeup. Men don't do... <laughs> bro, what, what a man values most is a trim. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. If your trim is messed up, bro, you have your to... Your life be, is messed up. And that for, <laughs> for the next two weeks. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you, you, it's either you be indoors or you wear caps or you... Are, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, so yeah. Uh, trim is a big thing mm. for men. Like, they like... But if, uh, if I see any guy that don't take their trim serious. I question myself also because, bro, you can't do makeup. Mm-hmm. You can't you can put uh, lipstick or yeah. eyebrows or this. All you got to do on your face is your trim. That's yeah. it. And that's all. So if you play with it, you're on your own. <laughs> <laughs> in Dubai, everyone wants to stay man. fresh, isn't it? Because uh, some people are on holiday. Some people yeah. are on business meetings. You see, so the, the good thing with Dubai, best. the good thing with Dubai, um, it can be a Monday. And as a barber, you are fully booked. Mm. You know, mostly it doesn't happen in most countries. Like, um, even I'll use Ghana, for instance, because that's where I'm from. That's where I know. Mm. Mostly, yeah, barbershops are busy. But you see Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Bit those quiet. are quiet. office working timings. And people are, people are not really on trims. Mostly uh, barbershops get busy, like from Friday, Saturday, Saturday yeah. Sunday. But... Oh, in Dubai, it's a different thing altogether. Every you day, know? you're busy seven days, yeah? It can be Monday and yeah. you are fully booked. When I say fully booked, oh, when I say I'm fully booked, that's, yeah. that means from morning. That's crazy, man. Maybe from 9 a.m. till 10 or 11 p.m. You, and it's back to back. Yeah. So, so what do you reckon cause that? Apart from your, like your actual trims itself, because I've seen some of your uh, TikToks and uh, Instagram reels as well with uh, Evra. Yeah. So do you think like the online presence kind of helped as well? Hey, big shout out to man like Pat, you know, big Come on. Pat. Yo, Come um, on, everyone, big up. Um, um, Patrice. We have him next on the podcast yeah, after. Come <laughs> on. <laughs> oh, yeah. the le- you know, Patrice is a legend. He's a like, legend, bro. Legend. And you see, I, one thing I like about him, he, he's very supportive. Mm. And he sees, when he sees greatness in you, he'll push you to your limit as well. Mm. Um, I remember when I told him I was going to open a shop, he said, yeah, Freddie, go on, go on. I, I believe in you, you know, yeah. you can do it. And to be honest, yeah, he's been very, very, very supportive, you know, very, very supportive. Like he's been here a couple of times. I go to his house to do his trim a couple of times. And he's one of the people that when he's happy with a trim, you will know yeah, that yeah. he's happy. So yeah, big ups to the legend, the one and only <laughs> Patrice. Ever, you know. Big up, man. Yeah, we actually saw him. Mr. Uh, I love this game. I love this game. <laughs> now, we actually saw him, was it? Uh, Abu Dhabi last, yeah, last Grand year. Prix. We saw so him Grand Prix. Yeah, proper genuine, humble guy, man. Oh, he's... You know, I meet, I meet most people and everyone is almost... You know, I think when, when you get to that level, probably maybe you've seen it mm. all... You've yeah. seen most of the things in life. So, there's, there is no... You know, there is no rudeness and there is no... Uh, I, I would say people at the top, from my experience, always want to support you mm-hmm. when they see you. Not not when you're being lazy though, or not when you you're not putting in any effort. But when mm-hmm. they see you putting in effort, they always 
or the sister. Yeah. Exactly. But do you ever get any like hate or like negative comments, stuff like that? Definitely. You won't yeah. you won't get everyone to like you. If everyone likes you, it's a problem. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if everyone yeah. likes you, it's a problem. Yeah. You must have competition, right? Who's it? You see me. Competition is something that I never I never put in my life, you know, because me myself, I'm always trying to be the better the best version of me. Mm. So the moment why I don't I don't rate competition, the moment you put you you try to compete yourself with someone, that means you are limiting yourself to the person. Mm. But there is always the sky is always it's, it's, the limit. It's, it's, it's not the sky is not even the it's limit. Not the limit. You can break through yeah. the sky as well. Yeah, 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 People yeah. go to space. Am I lying? Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So you can 100%. still break through the sky. So I don't want to see anyone as as a competitor or as my competition because then that means I'm limiting myself to the person. Yeah. I always try to do what I can. And if you see it as a competition, that's on you. But me, yeah. personally, I do what I do. And in my opinion, my clients and the people that I deal with, they appreciate it. And that's, that's, that's okay for me. That's yeah. How much money do you reckon you've cleared? What, seven <laughs> figures, eight figures, nine to the, straight figures. to the bank, yeah? <laughs> no, <laughs> Tell my, us this, man. You see, money-wise, money-wise... What are we looking at? Uh, nah. No one, no, <laughs> no one will give out figures well, of, come of, on, of whatever, <laughs> but... I don't, I don't, I don't need, I don't have to, I don't, I don't think, to me, I don't think I need to have a million in the bank to, to come mm. and to see myself like I'm rich or I'm doing well. Okay, let's reword it. How, I, ma- how much should you spend on this shop? That's another thing that we will come to. Yeah. <laughs> um, to me, I appreciate progress, progress more. The fact that I look back and I realize that I'm not in the same position that I used to be five years ago three mm. years ago, two years ago, and a year ago, that one alone is enough to enough for me. Do you understand what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I'm, 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 I, could see, I could see the progress myself. So it, it, it's, it's, it's not, it doesn't have to be necessarily having a million in the bank or having six figures in the bank, mm. but I can see progress. There's a track record of it. I can see progress. So that one alone is enough for me to, to be grateful and, and, and to keep on doing more, motivate yeah. me to do more. Because, okay, nine, year, nine years ago, back in uh, 2015, I was working in Daira. Mm. 2017, 2018, I was working in Jumeirah. 2020, I worked in Design District. Now, 2020, I, I, I moved on on my own mm. to be a mobile barber. And I done it for three years. 2023, end of 2023, uh, entering 2024, I own a barbershop. Mm. Do you understand what I'm saying? So you, so you can see your own progress. So that's the, that's, that, that's what, that motivates me more than anything. I don't mm. need to have uh, millions or six figures yeah. to know, to know, to know what I'm doing. So you know, you know you're succeeding your previous self each time. Um, so far as you are not waking up in the same position, that means even if it's slow progress, there's mm-hmm. still a movement. Still progress, still movement. Yeah, yeah. Slow progress is better than no, no progress. No, even if it's slow, but you are still moving. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So how does it feel then from going from, from where you started to now? Um, first of all, I'm very grateful to God, bro. Mm. Uh, it, could, it could have been worse, you know. Mm. So I'm always thankful to God and thankful to my supportive clients. Yo, each and every one of you that have been supporting Freddie, come on, this one is for you. Come. I really appreciate every one of you because who is Freddie without his clients? Yeah. Mm-hmm. No, you, you, are, clients. you, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Who is Freddie without the people that sit on my chair every day? They believing in me. Do you know, do you know how it is for, for someone to trust in you that I'm going to this guy and I know I'll live looking mm-hmm. fresh? That's crazy. Yo, I appreciate each and every one of you because um, for trusting me alone. Yeah, 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 why not? Do you think anything else helped, like on the on the journey? Um, anything else, like 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 in terms of uh, so obviously your customers help, but like, do you think anything else like helped you succeed? Like anything in particular that you think like, oh, this was an important factor of my success? You know, sometimes making decisions are so hard. Mm. Um, imagine working in a shop that. 
um, you have a fixed salary, whether you work or not. That's how it works in Dubai, by the way. Yeah. Whether you work or not, at the end of the month, you know you are getting salary. Then moving on your own with nothing guaranteed. That's a risk, big risk. Do you understand what I'm saying? Mm. Th- there is nothing guaranteed. Okay, when I started doing house trims, I didn't know, okay, you can have people that will say to you, bro, do it, we're going to support you. I know one guy that, uh, one of the people that even gingered me, like, and it gave me strong energy, like, yo, bro, yeah. go on your own, you have the client. Bro, I started house trim and he never trimmed with me for a year. Yeah. Yes, and he was still in Dubai. I don't know what it was, probably maybe the price or whatever. But you see, uh, so I couldn't, making that decision, transforming from working and having a salary at the end of every month to doing my own thing was mm. really tough. Taking that risk, yeah. Oh, it was. And that was during COVID as well. Nothing was guaranteed, you know. You don't know what was even, we didn't even know the situation with COVID, how it was going to be the next thing. Maybe they could say, maybe there's another lockdown for one year. Mm. You know, you know yeah, what I'm saying? You never, know, that, you never know. And you never know. So for me, that was the toughest decision. And I had to, I had to consult few people that do you think it's a good idea? Do you think it's a good yeah. idea? But yeah, big shout out to um, one of the, the, the guy, one of, one of the guys that really gave me like a, you know, when someone say, it's like a backbone, yeah, yeah. my senior sister in the U S she's called comfort. Yo, big ups to you. Mm. She, she pushed me. Um, my, my, my missus as well pushed me as well. It's like, yo, go, 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 do it. I mean, you, you, are, you, are, you, are, you understand? You are in it. Hmm. If it doesn't work, that's it. But do yeah. it. Yeah. Then uh, one, of, uh, one of my clients as well is known as uh, uh, Dunga, but his, name, his real name is Martins. He told me like, bro, just do it. If it doesn't work, come to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hold me responsible. And... Lo and behold, we are here now. Uh, I'm not seeing. I'm not saying I've made it. The mm. way I'm going, my journey, in my opinion, I've not even started yet. Mm. But you just but, appreciate like but you, exactly. Yeah. You need to appreciate the moment. Appreciate mm. the steps, baby steps. Because if you don't, if you don't appreciate the baby steps, how would you be appreciated when you get the major ones? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So to me, appreciation is very important. So in as much as People tell me that, yo, bro, you've, bro, you've gone far, you've gone far. And, uh, but because they see me from outside, they, they, people that knew see me. See you from social media. Exactly. Mm. To where I'm, they, they, bro, you've gone back. To me, I still feel like there's a long way. Yeah. Why, mm. What is your goal? What, what, what do you want to do? <laughs> Freddie Classic is a brand. Yeah. Now in Dubai, I mean, obviously quite a few number of people know it internationally. I mean, especially in the UK, some from the US, some mm-hmm. from Europe as well, um, in Ghana also. But I would say in in few years, I want it to be like an internationally brand, like mm-hmm. internationally recognized yeah, well, like brand. That when US, went, UK, everywhere. US, UK, everywhere, Saudi. Saudi, yeah. Everywhere, like, so when you hear of Freddy Classic, you know that, you know, for example, when, when they say Apple, you know it's, it stands for quality. Yeah, yeah. quality yeah. You know, when Apple is an Apple phone, it's an Apple this, it's an Apple TV, you know it's quality. Yeah. If they say it's Mercedes, you know it's quality. They say Bugatti, you know it's quality. quality yeah, yeah. So I, 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 I want, it, it needs to be, it will be something like, Freddy Classic, then you know that it's home of quality trims, you know? Quality trims, mm. yeah. yeah well, one thing I think about that is because, you know, uh, with things like Apple, I think it's products, isn't it? Obviously, with, uh, with uh, Barbershop. S- service. Service, I feel like it's, you're the unique selling point. So let's say if you have like a shop uh, in different different uh, places, but obviously if you're not there yourself, you know, it might be different because... Mm, it won't be. It won't be. It will be, but it won't be at the same time. Yeah, yeah. Because I feel like you're, you're the brand as well. Because if 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 I build if I'm building Freddy Classic shop in anywhere else, mm. it will be the same, right? Same kind of yeah, setting, yeah. same everything you see here will be the same thing there. Yeah. Same thing if I'm picking barbers, 
Mm. Oh yeah. If you are, if you know quality dreams, you can you can also see quite uh, Baba who can do quality, quality dreams. Mm. It, it shouldn't be exactly like how I would trim. Yeah. But at least if they score ninety percent out of it, that means you're good. Yeah. And you know, funny thing, sometimes people don't even. There are most mo- most of the time some guys don't even know the difference between trims, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Do you get it? Yeah. So far as the hair is cut, the fade is there. Mm. They don't know. The, they cannot tell that oh, this was done by Freddie or this was done by this one. Some some of some people don't really care. Mm. So as long as it's, it's neat and it's good. Then. And some also trust the brand. Once they trust the brand, they know. It's just like you know that anything Apple will bring out, Apple brings out will be good. Yeah. 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 Do, you, do you understand? Definitely, yeah. So, so you want to make that brand so you know every customer that steps solid, in. Solid, solid. It's, all, it's always going to be good. It's getting hot here. Right? <laughs> <laughs> so when I walked in here, I saw all the quality outfit. So yeah, how much did you spend? And like, where did you, how did you get the idea of this? You see me, one thing I never do is, 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 is to disclose figures. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, t- That's a smart, cam- smart move. Tell us off camera, yeah? <laughs> Maybe off camera, but you yeah. see, oh, we live in Dubai. Yeah. Mm. This is one of the wealthiest city that you can ever think of. Yeah. If you have one, someone have thousand. Yeah. Who made the design then? Did you? Oh, big shout out to um, um, Westbrook Interiors. Westbrook, big uh, up. They, they did, they did the uh, fit out, and yeah, it was, it was, it was a uh, head like a bit on and off, but so far, it's quality, isn't it? The, the comments from people that have seen it is it's always positive. So yeah, I'll give it to yeah. them. Even though they stressed me a bit, <laughs> but it's it's like that. I heard it's like that with all fit, uh, fit out companies in the most fit out companies in Dubai. Yeah, who who would you say is like the main like? Because obviously you had a celebrity clientele, you had Evra before as well. Uh, who would you say is the main like uh, clientele that's kind of pushed you to be like, you know what? I think you should go for it and buy a shop. Like, was there anyone a standout figure that that you thought um, helped me, encouraged me? No one pushed me into a shop or something but like i said i started doing house trims yeah from 2020 um 2020 2021 2022 when it got to 2023 i realized that the crowd is getting too much it's getting a lot yeah so i don't finish my trims on a daily basis like you will call for trim today i have to tell you come uh, maybe i'll i'll have chance after a week Mm. or after four days after five days and sometimes no, some some people will wait, but yeah. not everyone will wait, you know. So mm. I thought of it like, how do I expand? Because at that point, Freddy Classic was only me, and I and I can only do a handful of 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 people. Yeah, you know. So I think you mentioned you were the Umar Kamani as well, Umar the Kamani brothers. You had an opening, didn't it? Yeah, no, they 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 came from our opening, and um, yeah. When, when, even before I done this, yeah. I, 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 you know, it, it's always good to look up to people who are far gone, who, who are into business already, yeah, yeah. who have, who are business oriented as well. They gave me their piece of advice as well mm. to, uh, you know, I, I, I like the fact that, um, I get access to these people who are far ahead. High profile. So then, so then you look up to them. Yeah, so your network is your net worth. You know, mm. um, you look up to them and that's that's how you, because, okay, if you keep on seeing something every day, you might as well be like that thing. Yeah. You understand? If, if, you're, if you're around uh, four million, as they say, you'll be the fifth one. I'm not the fifth one yet. <laughs> maybe inshallah. Soon. Maybe inshallah. <laughs> Maybe it's that because yeah, I trim lots of millionaires. Maybe, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but that's what they're saying. If you, if you, if you, uh, if they're saying it's really true, man. Mm. Time will tell. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. time nah. will tell. Time nah. will tell. So yeah, it's been it's been a very long and tough journey. But you see, one thing I've realized that even the tougher the toughest moments are still worth celebrating. Mm. You know. Yeah. I, now I sit back and and look at like oh. Back in 2020, when I was trying to make this decision of going on my own, that was so hard. Yeah. Bro, you don't know how it, bro, I lost weight on that. Because I had to 
make a very solid decision and I was thinking yeah. and thinking and thinking and thinking. And finally came out, okay, yeah, I'll do it. But yeah. now I look at those times and I realize that it, it was worth celebrating that, those worth times it, too. Worth it, yeah. Sometimes I feel like you need to go uh, through the hardships to uh, to celebrate the wins, isn't it? You need to take the I'm L's not, to celebrate the W's. I'm not even in the wins yet. Inshallah, yeah, yeah, yeah. the wins <laughs> will come. <laughs> no, but definitely from where you progress to, obviously, the small steps, it's still a win, man. Yeah, you know? definitely. That's what I'm saying. Uh, I'm, I'm appreciating, like, I really appreciate how far I've come. Yeah, uh, even even like a little, even small step, because as you said, slow progress is still progress, bro. 100%. 100%. Yeah. So uh, what would success mean to you then? You see, I'm the type I'm always, I, I, I want, I don't want to be successful alone. Mm. Like, okay, yeah, only Freddie, only, when I, when I set up this shop, obviously, people, I, I put in barbers that I knew before. You, you understand? Yeah. And, and to be fair, I let them know, I'm not, I'm a barber myself, so I know problems that barbers face. Do you get it? Yeah. So if they if 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 I'm successful tomorrow, automatically I'm gonna push them to also be. So you're gonna help mm. other barbers become as successful as yourself, yeah. That's 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 what success what, means. That's yeah. one thing I would really would you say that makes you happy? Like just help help Yeah, you? definitely. Seeing seeing other people seeing other people happy through me, mm. that would mean a big thing to me. Yeah. So you're vicariously like living happy, happily. You say? So you like so you're happy because you made them happy. If I see people happy, mm. especially when their happiness came through me, yeah. I'll be way more happier. Uh, one thing I wanted to ask you is uh what's the craziest story that you've got from barbering? Craziest story? Yeah, like like, about. like any bro, like anything that's like even like around any of your clients that you've like you've never told anyone. No, if I've not told, if I've never told oh, so anyone, says, then you will never know. Yeah, yeah, no, I said, no, I can't, I said. But you see, um, um, barbers rate success in a different way. Like some to some people, mm. when you get international calls, like they flying you out. Yeah, that's that's a big thing for some of uh, some of the barbers. Uh, to others, yeah. when you have celebrities sitting on your chair, that's success to them. Uh, to 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 some people as well, as well when they're getting fully booked on a daily basis, that's success to them. And in my case, I've done it all. Oh, yeah. I've done it all. I flew. Uh, big shout out to a uh, man like Ball, yeah. my one of my close friends here uh, from South Sudan. He done one of the craziest, biggest weddings in in South Sudan, and he flew me out like for that. for for his dream, bro. It was amazing. Funny enough, you know, going to Sudan, I checked on Google and they're like, nah, don't go there. It's not safe and it's mm. not that. Bro, I'm going to tell you, I had one of the best experiences in South Sudan. Yeah. That's why I say big shout out to man like Bola Book, you know. <laughs> big you know? up, big up. You know? Yeah, yeah, so yeah, yeah, it was. It, was <laughs> it sounds funny, yeah? Fair shout outs. Too many shout outs, bro. Yeah, yeah. Shout them all out, bro. Come on. So Come yeah, on, it, was, it was a good one. Then uh, obviously you heard of the, the the twenty million pound wedding that happened in uh, uh, south of France. South of France is it? Where's for for you know, Monaco, yeah. Yeah, yeah, ne ne yeah, Antibes, yeah. So uh, Mr. Uma, Uma, yeah, the, the CEO of Pretty Little Thing, as you all know, mm. flew me for that for 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 his wedding as well. And to be fair, it's, it was one of the greatest experiences that that I had. That's the wedding crazy, was man. amazing, like, bro. Yeah, I've never imagine, seen, bro. I've never seen a wedding that you can have, you can find even a single glitch. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, Everything yeah, just went perfect, on yeah. smooth and perfect. So yeah, um, that was that was that was a good one as well. And on a normal daily basis, we meet. Everyone comes through, you know. Yeah. yeah. Freddy Classic is a is a brand for everyone. So tell us, uh, tell the people your opening hours. How, how many open? Yeah, so yeah, uh, Freddy Classic Barbers in Dubai, we, we located in um, Al Taraya Tower One, where yeah. we are now, um, in Media City next to next to Marina, and we open from 10 a.m. to 10 p.m. every day in the week. And then uh, how do how do people book? 
Uh, we have Fresher, they can book online, they yeah. can book by call, and they can book by WhatsApp. We have the numbers, everything is online. Yeah. You can book through the website as well. And um, yeah. They can message you on Insta as well, yeah? Yeah, yeah. On, uh, of course. Freddy yeah, Classics, yeah. Barbershop. Oh, guys, make sure you get him, get his Instagram. Make sure you get us, <laughs> cash flow combos. Anyone in Dubai, make sure. Come to see Freddy Classics, Come the main man. Boy, you won't be disappointing, bro. He's going to give you the well, best. Well, he saw it is trim. I look at the style he gave me before the podcast. <laughs> you <laughs> know, Shut you up, know, bro. For trims, I already know, bro. The, the, the records are there. Yeah, yeah the 100%, bro. The records are there. Bro. I mean, he's, got, he's got a big clientele. All the celebrities come here. Make sure you come check him yeah, out. Make sure, guys, yeah. Don't forget, so, everyone is a celebrity to me. At this moment, yeah. you're my celebrity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, Jeez. <laughs> yeah, come on. Yeah, big shout out to... Cash flow convos as well. Let's go, let's go. Come on. But yeah. Proper, big, proper, proper, proper people. Big shout out. Know, proper people. I'm, I'm sure we will do a next episode. Yeah, you why know? not? Yeah, we'll we do part two. We'll do a next part one. Two soon, Obviously, yeah, you don't. If, if you, maybe you, you, you are not in Dubai for long, but if you were here, definitely part two might come out. Yeah, yeah 100%. Because the story is not even done, you know. The story is yeah, not even done. Still more. We'll get to the rest in the next episode. Come on. <laughs> yeah, come, come on, on, come on. Let's yeah. go, yeah. let's go. Big shout out to everyone and... Thanks for your support once again. Appreciate it. Freddy, Thank you, for Cash Flow Convos. And Appreciate, it. Appreciate it for, Good for to see you guys. On. I love this game. That's for Patrice, you know. <laughs> Patrice, big man. They big say, yeah. we love this game here. Yeah. Take care. We love guys. this game. Make sure you subscribe. <laughs> Cash Flow Convos. All right. Take care, man. See you.